This man has just shelled out a jaw-dropping $55 billion on a fleet of new airplanes. Notably, just three months earlier, Air India acquired 470 airplanes from Airbus at an astounding $70 billion. But in an era where airline sales are plummeting and maintenance costs skyrocketing, is this the right move? What is it about the airline industry that keeps billionaires and entrepreneurs coming back for more? Airlines, after all their revenue from ticket sales and other services, often find themselves left with a razor-thin profit margin. A significant part of this financial crunch can be attributed to the high costs inherent to the industry. Buying or leasing airplanes comes with a massive price tag. There's also the fluctuating and often unpredictable cost of fuel. Add to that the salaries and benefits for pilots, cabin crew and ground staff, and it becomes evident how quickly expenses can mount up. But the costs are just one part of the puzzle. Airlines also face external risks that can blindside even the most robust business plans. Unpredictable weather patterns can lead to flight cancellations, and global events can trigger sudden surges in fuel prices. Notably, the COVID-19 pandemic emerged as a monumental challenge, causing massive disruptions, grounding fleets, and reducing passenger demand to unprecedented levels. The rise of budget airlines has intensified this competition even further. These budget carriers, offering lower ticket prices and zero frill, have changed the way people travel forever. To compete with these budget options, many airlines reduce their fares, sometimes resulting in major losses. So, what is it about the airline industry that has billionaires lining up around the block? It's important to understand that owning an airline isn't about money, it's a statement. Think about the attention one gets when they have something unique and cool. Owning an airline is like that, but on a much grander scale. For other entrepreneurs, owning an airline makes sense. Let's take a look at Sir Richard Branson. He's the brains behind the Virgin Group, which has both Virgin Hotels and Virgin Atlantic Airways. By having an airline, he can offer travel deals that include both a flight and a hotel stay, making it more attractive for tourists to choose Virgin for both. Similarly, American Airlines has its A Advantage hotels, allowing them to bundle flight and hotel offers. This provides added value to their customers and convinces them to stick with the American Airlines brand for their travel needs. In the same vein, other magnates look to carve out their niche through innovation. Every industry sees change makers, those who believe they can do things differently and better. The airline industry is no different. Entrepreneurs with bold ideas and elaborate plans often dive in, hoping to transform the way the business is done. Take Southwest Airlines, for instance. At a time when other airlines were playing the luxury game, Southwest chose a different path. They stripped things down to basics, emphasizing affordable, efficient, and dependable service. This disruptive approach didn't just earn them a seat at the table, it made them a serious contender, reshaping industry standards. Outside of flying passengers around, airlines own valuable assets. These aren't just big, expensive airplanes, but also include things like landing slots at busy airports and rights to fly certain routes. These are like golden tickets. If an airline has a slot at a major airport, like Dubai International, for example, it means they have permission to land and take off during specific times. Given how busy some airports can get, these slots are highly sought after. Moreover, airlines can also make money without flying. How? by leasing their planes to other airlines or even trading landing slots. Just like someone might rent out a room in their house or trade a valuable toy, airlines can do the same with their assets. This aspect provides another layer of potential revenue, making the industry more appealing to entrepreneurs. The allure doesn't stop there. Many parts of the world, especially in Asia and Africa, are seeing more people fly for the first time. As countries develop and more people move into the middle class, they have the means and desire to travel. Imagine a town that has never had a pizza place, and then someone opens one. That's what tapping into an unserved or underserved market is like, but on a much bigger scale with airlines. This growing demand from new travelers presents a golden opportunity for airlines to step in and offer services. Wise businessmen often think far ahead. They understand that while the airline industry can be tough now, there might be potential rewards in the long run. Investing in airlines is also a way to diversify which means they're spreading out their investments. Instead of putting all their money into one type of business, they invest in various sectors. So even if one business faces challenges, they have others that might be doing well. 
Investing in airlines can be a part of this diversification strategy, balancing out other investments in their portfolio. It's a way to not put all their eggs in one basket, ensuring they have multiple avenues to success. While the attraction to the airline industry is undeniable, there's a flip side to the coin. Not every venture into this world of flight proves successful. The sad reality is that many such endeavors fail, and for various reasons. One primary challenge is that while the returns can be rewarding, they can also be very unpredictable. Airlines have to consistently deliver impeccable service, maintain a fleet of planes, deal with fluctuating fuel prices, and adapt to global situations, all while facing fierce competition. Take a look at Vijay Malia, an Indian businessman. With a successful liquor business under his belt, Malia ventured into the airline space, launching Kingfisher Airlines in 2005. While the airline aimed to redefine luxury in the Indian skies and initially saw success, it eventually faced immense financial pressures. High operational costs, combined with aggressive expansion plans, led to significant debt. Despite Malia's vast resources, Kingfisher Airlines ceased operations in 2012, marking a significant setback in his business career. And if you're curious about the exclusive world of the Hamptons and why the elite might prefer to keep it to themselves, don't miss this next video. Thanks for watching.